Tonight, after a crash earlier today, Marion leaders are already making immediate changes to the stoplight at the intersection of Halfway Road and Route 13. We have the latest next. Plus, today, a judge sentenced a Brookport man to life in prison for the killing of a Kentucky teen. We have the latest next. Plus, a candidate for the city council is withdrawing from the race, but says it has nothing to do with an objection to his nominating petition in Carbondale. We have those stories and more tonight on the Monday Night Edition of News 24 at 10. And good evening. Thanks for joining us. We have a lot of news to get to, but we begin in Marion, where after a crash earlier today, Marion leaders are already making immediate changes to the stoplight at the intersection of Halfway Road and Route 13. Leaders tell us they've made a change to that stoplight, making the yellow or caution light turning into and out of the pilot gas station longer. We will have an interview with leaders tomorrow morning about what else they think can be done to fix the intersection. As for today's crash, nobody was injured, a semi and a car were involved. Today, a judge sentenced a Brookport man to life in prison for killing a Kentucky teen. As part of a plea deal today, Terry Froman agreed to plead guilty to the murder and kidnapping and other charges connected to the murder of his ex-girlfriend's son in September 2014. Froman then kidnapped Kim Thomas, drove her to Ohio, and killed her along Interstate 75. Terry Froman had been sentenced to death in June of 2017 for killing his ex-girlfriend. He has appealed that case all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court. To the weather where a warm-up is on the way, here's Terry with the latest. All right, thanks, Terry. Turning to Carbondale tonight, where a candidate for city council is withdrawing from the race, but says it has nothing to do with an objection to his nominating petition. As we previously reported, Carbondale City Council candidate Gerald Henrich claims fellow candidate Greg Noob violated rules when he collected signatures from people who do not live in the Carbondale city limits on his nominating petition. The Electoral Board met for less than 10 minutes Monday morning before setting a date to hear arguments from both sides next week. After the hearing, Noob's attorney, Alfred Sanders, admitted his client had some invalid signatures but believed there were enough valid ones to get him on the ballot. He says Noob had to gather signatures quickly after deciding to run last minute. But just five hours after that meeting, Noob withdrew his candidacy, but he says it's not just because of the signature concerns. In a statement, Noob said local code disallows any council member from holding a license in the liquor establishment with any sort of license other than a Class A license. Noob is the owner of Sticks in Carbondale and said that his ownership would prevent Sticks from continuing to hold his license if he were elected in Noob's statement he added if he was elected he didn't want to begin his term on council locked in a legal battle with the city he finished by wishing the seven other candidates good luck in the april election in franklin county tonight for the third time since 2015 franklin county board members want to try to replace the county courthouse with a three quarter of a percent or one percent sales tax increase officials said they plan to demolish the 1875 courthouse and build a brand new courthouse costing the county $15 million. 
Franklin County Board Chairman Randall Crocker said a new courthouse is the best option because they don't think it's feasible to repair the old building. Business owners in Franklin County, like Kevin Edwards, who owns Edwards Antiques and Jewelry in Benton, believe the tax increase can possibly hurt his business. County officials said this new courthouse is needed, so they'll push for the proposal, but voters already rejected similar proposals in the past. Two previous referendums proposing tax increases to pay for a new courthouse were shot down. The Franklin County Board plans to vote December 18th on whether to put the sales tax increase on the April ballot. Mental health advocates plead with lawmakers to increase funding for behavioral health care workers. Officials who spoke today at a hearing in Chicago say Illinois has the sixth largest shortage of behavioral health care workers in the country. It's something officials at the Gateway Foundation in Carbondale say is a complicated problem. Executive Director Ana Jurich said a lot of the changes in behavioral health care have been driven by insurance companies or managed care organizations. And they have to do that work with fewer qualified workers. Advocacy groups told lawmakers in Chicago today about possible solutions to the problem. That includes paying behavioral health care workers more for their services because qualified people find higher paying jobs in other states. Church says she's doing what she can to recruit workers, but it's tough. <clears throat> Lawmakers approved the creation of a task force to study a possible behavioral health education system run by at least one of the state's universities. Because the governor didn't sign the bill until August, officials say they need more time for the task force to finish its report. Much more local news, sports, and weather is coming up next on News 2410. But first, here's the latest in national news in your Fox News update. In Fox News... On the calendar, I'm Lisa Lacerra, Fox News. President Trump is set to meet with the Congressional Democrats tomorrow, the hope to avoid a government shutdown. President Trump and top Congressional Democrats are due to meet with a central focus being homeland security and border security. House Republican Whip Steve Scalise told Fox's America's Newsroom that Democrats haven't been willing to cut a deal. The president, by the way, was willing to put a lot of things on the table to negotiate uh, with Democrats in exchange for uh, wall funding. And they walked away and they said they don't want to do anything. Ahead of the meeting, Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer issued this warning with Homeland Security due to run out of funding late night, December 21st. The one and only way we approach a shutdown is if President Trump refuses both of our proposals. On Capitol Hill, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. The president must also decide who will replace outgoing Chief of Staff John Kelly after it was announced over the weekend he would leave at the end of the year. One of the names mentioned, House Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows, gets some advice for the next Chief of Staff. Whoever is uh, chosen for that job, if they empower the current staff in making sure that they actually act on behalf of the American people, I think it'll be uh, a Chief of Staff that serves the President and the country well. On uh, Fox is the story with Martha McCallum. The mother of a Colorado woman missing since Thanksgiving, pleading for her safe return. Kelsey Barrett was last seen at a grocery store. Cheryl Barrett saying this is unlike her daughter. She's not the kind that runs off. This is completely out of character. Kelsey loves her God, she loves her family and friends, and she loves her job. 
She's reliable, considerate, and honest. The 29-year-old cell phone was pinging in Idaho, nearly 700 miles away on the day of her disappearance. This is Fox News. Stop. Factory has been helping folks find the right adjustable bed for over 20 years. Our friendly staff has the experience to walk you through the many details you'll need to consider when choosing an adjustable power bed. We're here to help you find the perfect balance of comfort and support and offer 40 possible mattress and frame options. Stop by our show today and let us help you find that perfect adjustable bed that's just right for you. Sterling Mattress Factory, handcrafted comfort close to home. This week at Target, the more you spend on toys, the more you save. Save $10 on Swift toys. Save $10 on surprise toys. Save $10 on action toys. Save on toys, only at Target.
All right, thanks, Terry. Turning to Carterville tonight, where a tradition for more than two decades, the Pichard Foundation for Abused Children gathers hundreds of toys for kids who otherwise may not get anything for Christmas. Tri-State Business Equipment in Harrisburg is one of the organizations supplying the toys, along with Ameren and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Owner Richard Mark gathers the toys during his annual Christmas party, asking guests to bring a toy. Clark said the toy drive is important to him because he was the type of kid the Bouchard Foundation helps. Joe Pichard of the Pichard Foundation said about 1,700 toys will go to roughly 400 children in the area. <laughs> Toy distribution continues through Tuesday. A small earthquake registering 2.5 according to the U.S. Geological Survey was recorded about four miles northeast of Pinckneyville early Sunday morning. The earthquake originated roughly eight miles below ground just after 5 a.m. James Condor, a professor of geology at SIU, says it's most likely most people didn't feel any shaking due to the depth of the earthquake. He said an earthquake at that depth would likely need to be at least a 4.0 to be noticeable. noticeable. Condor said this is a good reminder to update your earthquake safety plan given our region's proximity to the Wabash and New Madrid Falls. You can find all these stories and more at our website, www.news24si.com. News 24 Sports is next. We're back here tomorrow.